Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be turning this, the Streamer X, or a Roadcaster Duo, or just about any Roadcaster device that has the smart pads, into a Stream Deck so you can change scenes with OBS. Stick around if you want to see it. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, so to start this off, we are going to need to do a little prep work. Obviously, we need the Streamer X or any type of MIDI device. Um, this does work on the Streamer X, the Roadcaster Duo, the Roadcast, the Procaster, Roadcaster Pro 2, and the original Roadcaster. It will work on that. Um, I'm assuming that it works on a lot of the other MIDI devices also, just as long as it has a MIDI controller in it. But right now, we're, we're dealing with the Rode devices, and it works on all of them. I've tested it on the, the Streamer X, the Roadcaster Duo, um, the Roadcaster Pro 2, and then the Roadcaster. So this all does work on there. Other prep work that we're going to do, need to do is we are going to need to install WebSocket. And I already did a video on that, and that will be up in the corner right there. Um, go ahead and watch that and get WebSocket hooked up. We're not going to go over it completely, but I will go over the setup and the settings you have to use to get this to work properly. And then the other plugin is the MIDI control. You, this does work with OBS Studios. I haven't tested it with uh, Streamlabs or any other one streaming software, anything like that. So just know that it, it, this has been tested on the OBS and the road devices, nothing else. So let's go ahead and um, get MIDI control installed and then we are going to get it uh, set up so we will communicate with WebSocket. Okay, so here we are at the OBS plugin website um, and this is the plugin that we're gonna use. Um, the other one is WebSocket, I've already got it installed. Again, if you don't know how to install WebSocket, I do have a video on that. It'll be linked in the description and it'll be somewhere up there in one of the cards. Um, get that installed first because without it, this isn't going to work. So uh, we need to download MIDI control. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. It's only for Windows, so if you're using a Mac, um, I, I apologize, but uh, the developer of this has only made it available for Windows right now. So we're gonna download the setup. It may say Windows Defender Smart Screen prevented this unrecognized app from starting, blah, blah, blah. If you have your firewall on and you've got an uh, antivirus or anything like that, may pick it up. It's safe, it's been run through um, multiple online things to test and see if it doesn't have any Trojans or anything like that. Go to more info. I'm going to say run it anyway, and 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 you're watching this, so I'm testing it for you. So yeah, accept the agreement. Click next. It'll give you two options: auto start and enable MIDI forward. You don't need MIDI forward, so you don't need to check mark that if you want. Um, they do have some good write ups on the plugin webpage on what this is. You can go read that if you want. I'm not going to go over it. And then auto start is self explanatory. It just auto starts with Windows. I'm not going to. Click on either one of those for simplicity's sake, and we're just going to go ahead and click Next. Install. At the end of the install, it'll say Launch MIDI Control. Um, forward thinking here, this needs to be started before anything starts. So before you start up OBS or before you start up Road Central, which we're going to be using, um, you need to have this up and running. So we're going to go ahead and let it launch and say Finish. Okay, so once we get it installed and it's up and running, this is what you're going to get. You're going to you're going to get a blank screen, right? First thing you need to do is you need to go down to the bottom and check your icons here. Obviously, we see some red icons and we see some black icons. The MIDI function will only appear if you have a MIDI device on. So if you have the Roadcaster or the Streamer X hooked up um, and it's still red, you can just click this button and it'll enable it. OBS right here and Twitch, neither one of those are up and running right now, so it's showing them as red. So we're going to open up OBS, and you'll notice that that button right here went to black. So it knows, and it can see OBS. Now, if that won't see OBS, there are a couple of settings that you need to set up with regards to this. We need to go to Menu and MIDI Control Options, and it will bring up this. This is where WebSocket comes into play. As you can see, it says WebSocket IP. It gives you your loopback or the, your home address, 127.0.0.1, right? Um, won't get into IP address schemings, but that's your home address. That just says that, you know, we're looking at the computer that we're, we're, uh, we're on. Um, the last four digits are your port, 4444. Just leave it on default. You can have 
a password if you want for authentication purposes. If you're doing it outside of your own network, I would say put a password so where nobody else is stream, uh, catching your, your video stream or, or anything like that over the network. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and click save. Uh, you have the Twitch authentication down here at the bottom too, so we can log in. Like if you want to log into Twitch, obviously. Um, and just go ahead and click save. And that's all you really need to do. We do need to go into OBS. Um, once you get it open, we're going to go into tools. WebSocket server settings. For this to work properly, you need to enable WebSocket server. So this needs to be checkboxed. This right here needs to be checkboxed. You need to have the same server port as what you hooked up or what you set up in uh, MIDI control. So 4444, obviously. And then this box right here, enable authentication, uh, allows you to use a password if you want. As you can see, the WebSocket session is already up and running. If you don't see anything down here at the bottom, then it is not running. OBS and MIDI control won't talk to each other if it's not up and running. So, okay, now that we've got that part set up, we need to open up Road Central. Okay, so once we open up Road Central, um, we need to obviously click on our device right here. I do want to say that um, if you're doing this, you have to be using USB 1 on the Rodecaster Duo or the Streamer X, and you have to be using the high bandwidth cable that came with them, or else this will not work. So, that being said, we're going to go over to Customize Smart Pads. It'll ask you to put the uh, Streamer X into Transfer Mode. We're going to click Continue. We're going to go over to MIDI, and then we're going to click on one of the buttons right here. Obviously, it has four buttons, right? And then you have all these other buttons that you can add, okay? It gives you two options. It gives you momentary and it gives you latching. Uh, the difference between this is momentary is just pressing the button and letting it go means that whatever action you have attached to that smart pad will happen. Latching means that you press the button and it continues to do that action until you press the button again. So we're gonna say momentary so we can just click the button and we're gonna set it for MIDI trigger one and then we're gonna open back up MIDI control. We're going to add a keybind up here. We're going to go to OBS. We need to name it first, and we'll say we'll name this one Scene 2, so where it uh, moves us to Scene 2. For the OBS, on key press, we want it to switch the scene. And then if it's connected OBS properly, you'll see your scenes on there. So we've got Scene 1, Scene 2, and Vertical Scene. So we're going to set this one to Scene 2. We can click OK, and we're going to add. It'll open up. We're going to right-click, Edit, and you're going to go in here. Where it says MIDI device right here, you'll see that it doesn't it doesn't say anything right now. But but if we click one of these smart pads, it should populate. Now it says it's a MIDI function. Now our red button right here changes the scene. To save it, we're just going to click modify, and it's saved. We'll open up. We'll open back up OBS. We'll go to scene one real quick. Enable the preview. We've got this red button right here. Right? I'm going to press this, and it's going to change the scene. Okay? Now we'll make one that goes back to the scene, or go back, goes back to scene one. Again, add a key bind, name it, scene one, on key press, switch scene. We're going back to scene one. We're going to go and click add. We're going to edit this. And it's back in there, and we'll go ahead and change it to this yellow one right here. As you can see, the MIDI function changed. We'll go ahead and click Modify to save it. Now we can switch. Now we can switch scenes back and forth. And there you go. Now you've got scene switching, you know, uh, Stream Deck-like buttons on your Streamer X. So now the Streamer X does Stream Deck stuff. It does capture card stuff like Elgato. It does audio stuff like Rode, which is, you know, what they do. Now this is all of the things. Um, that being said, we'll go back in here. And this program actually does a lot more than just this. You can do it on key press or on key release. And you can do a slider change also with adjusting volume, adjust filter, adjust transition dur duration, and, and slide current transition. There's a lot of stuff this can do. It can actually even mute or disable different things on a GoXLR if you wanted to do it that way. If you guys want to see um, the 
if you guys want to see stuff on the Go XLR, this being used on there, so where you can like mute and toggle different things, let me know in the comment section below. But uh, you got MIDI control. The Streamer X does MIDI control pretty well, so I mean, you really wouldn't need that. Uh, you can do Twitch chat. Media keys, if you want to media keys for play, pause, you know, all that stuff. And then you've even got some soundboard options to make your own sounds and stuff. So there it is. The Streamer X, the Roadcaster Duo, the Roadcaster Pro 2, the Roadcaster Original, all of the things. This device now, along with just about any other MIDI controller, um, can turn anything into a stream deck for OBS. So yeah, what do you guys think about that? Um, you want some advanced tutorials on this? You want to see it on the Go XLR? You want to see it on other MIDI controllers? It, what, what would you like to see with regards to this? Um, what do you think about turning this into a stream deck up with your smart pads? Um, let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you guys like the content, uh, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, notification button so you know I upload other videos. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that on any of the videos or if you need help, um, there's Discord in the description. Um, the X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, is down there. Um, those are the best ways for you guys to get a hold of me. I do answer my YouTube channel as quickly as I possibly can between work and my day-to-day -day stuff that I have to do. Um, but if you have questions, ask away. I will try to get to you as quickly as I possibly can to help you out. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.